Mr. McWraith, good timing. I have a favour to ask you. My old warehouse is invaded by a ghostly plant, and I need something from there. Seems I'm a gardener now. Yes, well, I had a man who did this kind of work, but he made a promise to his stick-in-the-mud ghost wife, and I have him no longer. To be fair to you, it's entirely your fault. But I will forgive you. If you bring me back the oil and pigment stored in my overgrown warehouse. A generous offer. How could I turn it down? Till we meet again. You mind your good self, do you hear? I think we've hit an earth. I take the heart, you take the roots. Precise. Well done. <laughs> there, Phoebe's merchandise. That 
oil and pigment for making paint. Blasted pest! <gasps> How are things? What's new? Well, now, some say things are going really well and we are saved. Others say things are going terribly badly and we are doomed. I'm just glad things are going at all. I have your oils and pigment. You have some painting to do? That's the plan. You've had what you needed a while now. Yes. I bought it for a portrait that haunted me. I never started it. I had some important drinking to do. Can't do that no more. Being sober is so very dull. Best I try to put some colour into it. You taught me that I still had something to lose. Thank you, I suppose. I can't see much happiness in the future, so I shall try to paint it. Perhaps then it may come into being. A happy Ishmael, a happy me. Wish me luck. Till we meet again. You mind your good self, dear.
Goody Perkins. Mr. McRae. You got your memory back. How did that happen? It was as though a wave washed through me. The memories were carried in the foam, then left behind like flotsam. I'm better. I'm yet far from whole. There is a... a terrible sadness in me. A tide of melancholy. I fear... I fear that it shall rise, and I shall not know what to do, but drown. You must also have happy memories. Oh, I do. I remember his pride when he bought the Kronos. It took all we had, but it was worth it to see his eyes shine so. Richard was a simple man. <laughs> Better with fish than people. <laughs> but he worked hard. He earned that boat, and he was its captain. But a sailor's wife does not live easy. I remember the fear when he went to sea. I remember the dread. I'd till our plot by day, and of an evening, stand at the cliff, watching for his return. Beautiful memories. I hope they're of some comfort. How are we feeling, Goody Perkins? I'm feeling guilty. What about you? I hope you're sleeping, for I am not. Worry for the future. Worry for the past. But I take solace in my memories of Richard. Good. Hold to them. I so miss the time when Richard and I used to walk along the beach. There was a cave. I have never ventured into it. Richard used to spin me yarns about this mysterious place. Tall tales from the sea. I did love them so. And I'm sure at least some were true. In one tale, the captain hid his treasure in a hiding place, so that on the day he stepped ashore for good, he would make his wife the finest gift. I could hear it in his voice. This tale was true. What treasure would a fisherman hide upon the beach? A promise. A wish. In the form of a rosary of pearl. I'll bid you good day, Goody Perkins. May God guide you, Mr. McRaith. Here it is. Try this on. 
Here, I found something. No rosary. No rosary. That is frustrating. She'll be disappointed. It might have distracted her from the misery. I don't see her essence. She's not home. I don't know where she could be. Her husband's grave, perhaps. The rosary. She had it all along. Why did she lie about it? I have a bad feeling about this. Like, very bad. Awful, in fact. To the ship. And hurry! This on for seconds. Too late. Damn it. Maybe we were always too late. Maybe her destiny was already written. Maybe it can't be changed. Looks like the teacher is short of books.
So you'll notice, I'll keep an eye out. All donations gratefully accepted, sir. I must take my leave of you, sir. God keep you, for I shall not. Mr. McRaith. Mr. Cottle. And a good day to you. How goes it? How goes it? It does not go. For want of barley, I can make no bread. But I do have oats. I can make oat cakes, and folks here may eat. But oat cakes require butter and salt, neither of which I possess. You won't find butter, but perhaps someone has oil somewhere. I dare not brave the roads. Any help you could offer with this difficulty would be most gratefully received. I'll bear that in mind. I should go. God go with you. Watch out. Spectre position.
But that spectre is looking for a body. Aye. in left. Do we have enough Bibles for Hugh Bachelor? What do you think? Don't ask me. One is already too many. Whatever you want from me, I doubt I can help you. Your Bibles, Mr. Bachelor. I doubted you. Forgive me, neighbor. You are indeed a good Samaritan. They shall find a good home in the school at New Eden. I must take my leave of you, sir. God be with you.
Greetings, Mr. Sather. And how are you, sir? So, salesman, sell me something, if you can. My pleasure. Tell me, what do you need and what do you want? I must go. Thank you for your time. Take care, and mention it not. Storeroom. Locked. Do we have enough Bibles for Hugh Bachelor? What do you think? Don't ask me. One is already too many. Camp is a camp no longer. It's a village.
Good day, Nelly. All the better for your presence, Mr. McRae. Let's trade, Mrs. Eaton. All right, let's. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Eaton. Thank you for your interest, Mr. McRaith. Good day. Good day to you too, Mrs. Hake. I'll take my leave, Mrs. Hake. Yes, do that. Kate, good day to you. Good to see you back in business. Red McWraith, what can I do for you? There are things I need. Will you trade? We may have some little surplus, if it be of use. Goodbye to you, Huntress. I'll look forward to seeing things improve now that you're in charge. Thank you, Red. Travel safe.
could bring Cottle his oil and salt. Here, I found what you asked for. You, sir, have earned a reward. A discount to be used at your discretion. Thank you, Mr. Cottle. Something to look forward to, then. I should go. And I must work. Won't you leave me alone? Now that you're in charge, what's the word in camp, may I ask? I've little time, but you may ask. What's your plan? I've thought long and hard about this. My conclusion? We should stay here. Start afresh. Here? In the woods? They won't always be the woods. We'll clear the land. Plant it. Make something of it. We owe it to those who died. All right, then. What's the news around here? Jacob Lynn lives among us now. That's new. And surprising. He's always been wild. Oh, I've met the man. He did seem ill-suited to, you know, being around other people. That he believes himself a wolf. That's new, too. That surprises me less. He's always been... Strange. How is your sister? She's gone. When I told of what she'd done, she had no choice but to leave. Did telling the truth serve you? The truth is dangerous. Not least to she who tells it. But the cut is clean. The rot is gone. Her lies can harm us no more. Will you just make peace? I don't know. She sent friends and neighbours to their deaths. I'd like to think she'd not have done the same to me. But I'll never know for sure. It's time we talked of Deborah. Yes. It is. What happened to her? Pennington levelled accusations against her. Vile accusations. Many delighted in them. She was clever. She was free. She cherished the truth of the mind and of the heart. Some took that for godlessness. But I've never met a person more divine. How did you meet? I'll not answer that. It's the moment of my life I cherish most. Words would only fail it. I will say this, despite my grief. For a time, I laid my head on Deborah Comenius's bosom. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. Her ghost appeared when we downed the beast. Have you seen her since? God save me, no. My heart would not bear it. Might it happen yet? I don't believe she wished to frighten you. And that shall bother you again. She has business elsewhere. If ever you should deal with Deborah, deal quick. Let her not suffer long. For her sake, and for mine. 
I'm trying to track someone down, and I was hoping you could help me. I doubt I'll be much use, but I'll help you if I can. So, I found your name in an old letter. It was addressed to someone by the name of Grace. It was written by Deborah Comenius. You're tenacious. I'll give you that. But must you push so? Deborah wrote of a cabin in the woods. Could this Grace person have found it? I don't know. It was all a very long time ago. I had forgotten her. Did Grace ask you for help? No. Grace Pennington vanished. No one ever saw her again. Grace Pennington? As in Captain Saul Pennington? Pennington had a daughter, and you knew her. I knew her, but not well. Deborah had her in the school and spoke of her from time to time. Shy as a porcupine and twice as prickly, as I recall. Deborah wrote the letter in February 1688. When did Grace disappear? Months later, Pennington accused Deborah of being a witch. In my recollection, that moment overshadows all others. What did Grace look like? I remember her thin and boyish, encumbered by dresses she hated to wear. That sounds like Seeker. Does the name Seeker mean anything to you? It sounds less a name than a calling, but neither mean anything to me. We done. One more question. Did the school teacher keep a cabin in the woods? Deborah spent much time walking the woods, trying to understand New Eden, she said. Now that you mention it, I remember a snowstorm. She spent three days in a hut not far from here. Southeast, across the drawbridge, along the path towards the mine. If it's still there. Goodbye to you, Huntress. I'll look forward to seeing things improve, now that you're in charge. Thank you, Red. Travel safe. <sighs> Just our luck that when we need Seeker the most, she disappears. I still don't understand why the ritual failed. Let's just find the hut. Things look better here. Helen is working out. Banishes. Good day. You look well, Mrs. Priest. We struggle on. But yes, I feel better. How are you doing, Helen? My days are quiet. Some are better than others. At times, I am grateful for the memories. At others, they feel like fingers clamped upon my throat. I'm still learning to live around my grief. I wish I could tell you that time heals all, but I'm still learning too. Maybe it doesn't. One day, it will be safe to remember. In this, I trust. What can you tell me about a young woman by the name of Grace? It seems you already know some of the story. It was a long time ago, but I'll do my best to fill in the gaps. What happened to her? As I heard it told, one day Grace just wasn't there anymore. How was their relationship? I believe it was... stormy, as you'd expect between a commander and his disobedient daughter. I do think he loved her. But as far as anyone ever saw, he never shed a single tear for her. 
Later, after he exiled her, did the captain try to find his daughter? Not to my knowledge. He did not set off in search of her, nor did he send men. At the time, I thought it strange. Still do. I'll never understand how a man could reject his only daughter. And that, my inquisitive banisher friends, is all I know about the matter. Take care of yourself, Helen. I will. No one else seems to want to.